Welcome to Cash Register Warehouse. Today we're going to give you a rundown on how to set up a Casio SEC450. You can also do this with the Casio SES400, SEC3500 and Casio SES3000. Firstly what we do is we just take this cover off so it just clips, unclips from the back. We open the platen arm so we just lift that up gently. We can actually remove this spool as well. The first thing we need to do is take out the battery cover and put two batteries in place there. They aren't included, you will need to purchase these. So we'll just pop those in here. Put the cover back on. And next of all we need to then put the paper roll in. So you must feed this from underneath so it just sits down inside the cavity, pull it forward and just close the platen arm. And just tear that piece of paper off and then just replace the cover. From here we can now put the power into the power point so I'm just going to do that. Now the first thing that is displayed is what language you would like. So what we do is we use the down arrow and we select English and press the CA amount 10 key. It's now saying the date, so today's date is the 28th, down arrow of the 1st, 01, down arrow 14, and we can then put the time in in 24 hour time. Once this is done, you then press the CA slash amount 10 key. Now you might just need to wait a short while, which it actually does tell you that on the receipt as well. So we'll just wait for that to finish. Now this is set up for Australian only, so what we're doing here is setting the tax rate for GST as 10. So we type in 10 and push the CA key. Now the next thing we do is turn the key to the X position, and this again is for Australia. So we type in 01012001, we then push the subtotal key, then we push the CA amount 10 key. And all the GST system has changed as it says on the receipt. What we do then is we turn the key around to the program position, and we're actually going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now this is the way that Cash Register Warehouse sets their terminals up. So we go down to the system setting and we press the CA key. Now the first thing we want to do is type in 3 and then subtotal, 2122 subtotal, then we need to type in 4300300004, then we push the CA key, then we hit subtotal. This will then change it from a graphic logo into a text logo. So you can enter whatever characters you want in there. The next thing if you would like to do is remove the grand total off the, off the end of day reports. So we type in 1622 subtotal. Then what we do is we type in 1177, press the CA key, then we press subtotal. Now this is all that needs to be done and your machine is actually ready to use but what we're now going to do is go around and program some department keys on this flat keyboard section. Now you've got 72 keys, they can be set up as either department keys or with a code given from us they can also be set up as PLU keys. So what we need to do, it does say to exit this um, system setting by changing the mode key, we then turn it back to the program position and the first selection there is department setting. So what we would then do is hit the CA to make a selection into departments. You can then enter the department number if you do know the number or the way we normally do it is push the CA key and it gives you a list of all of the departments actually on the screen. Now the first one that's highlighted is department number one but on our key here we've actually, I don't know if we can see it there but it does say slushy small. So what I'm actually going to do is go down to the department 2 key because number 1 is not available or not being used on this, this time 
and then hit the CA key. Now the first thing that it does is comes up and highlights unit price. So what we do is this one is two dollars, so we type in two zero zero. Now we don't use the decimal point when we're programming, or when you're making a sale either for for um, yeah for doing any of those. So then we just go down to the taxable status, press the CA key. Now if it's a non-GST item, we do actually just leave it alone and leave it as non-tax, or we go down to the TS1 and then press CA. Now that actually then makes it a taxable status one. We only use tax one in Australia at this point in time. We can also then change the department name if we go up and highlight department number two there. We press the um, decimal point to erase the description and I'm actually then uh, going to get another piece of paper here which is in, in the manual section. I'll just open this up. And what it is, it's an overlay descriptor which gives you all of the characters and numbers. So what we're going to do there is we're actually going to type in here slushy. And it's a small one, so we might just go SML, the small. The RA button on this key at the front face, it's a bit hard to see off here, but you, it is actually a space key and it does have the word space on there. So we're just going to hit space and we're just going to type in here slushy as to how many characters we can actually get in there and we can fit everything in this one so we then just hit the cache key now all of those selections have been made so we've got small slushy two dollars of a taxable status of one which means it does have gst and then we can hit subtotal from there we can then go down arrow and select whichever department we've got here so let's do two here we've got department number three so we hit the CA amount tend. Now the large slushy is three dollars, so we type in three double zero. I'm just going to change the tax on this, so we highlight the taxable status and press CA. Down arrow to TS1 and press CA again, and that's now made that a taxable item. We'll then go up to the top to the description again. The delete button is decimal point. And this one, we're going to put this overlay on here again, and we're going to make this a large slushy. So LGE space being that RA key at this point, and slushy. U S H I E. Okay, so that description's in there as well. And then we just hit the CA key and then subtotal to finish. Now if that's all we need to change we just keep pushing subtotal until it goes all the way back as far as we can go to the program setting and just for an example here I'm just going to tear this piece of paper off so you can see uh, we can then if we go around to the REG which is the regular position we can then press small slushy and large slushy and you'll see those appear up on the screen I'll just hit the CA key, which is your cash key, just to finalise that transaction. And you can see there that the receipt has now been changed into the small and large slushy with the GST included. Now to change the receipt logo, we turn the key around to the PGM position. We go down to the message setting and hit CA. And up on here you can see your receipt thank you call again on the different logo sides. So what we do is we actually go up and down with our arrows to highlight which one we'd like and if we hit the CA key to make that selection of the one we would like to change, hit decimal point and from there we can type in whatever we like. So let's just type in there test, so T-E-S-T -E and then hit the cash key and it then says test on the logo one. So when it does print out, it'll actually put the text of whatever you've put in there. To center it, you just need to count up the amount of characters. There are 24 characters in total. So if you are using 12 characters that you count up, including spaces, then if there's 12 left over, what we would do is space it in six times because, because there are six remaining characters. And that will make it look a little bit nicer on the receipt as well. So if I just press subtotal to go back into the program setting, 
back into reg mode, it's actually ready to start using now, um, apart from, you know, obviously changing the different receipt headers.